Um, so uh, we have learned some kind of new relationships between and some new terms for understanding acids, their conjugate bases, the degree of dissociation of those acids, all right, uh, and then what we call the equilibrium expressions for um, those acids, all right. So a little review here. In general, an acid, right, HA represents a kind of a, a general generic acid where H is the proton and A is what we call the, the anion or the counter ion that's with that proton, right? Weak acid, so it does dissociate, but how much is it dissociate? Can you tell me, Brielle, by looking at this, how much is it dissociating? What percentage of it is dissociating? Any ideas? Well, because it has the arrow going back, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. I know if, if it was like completely, wouldn't it just have one arrow? That's right. That's right. It's, it's too bad we don't have a tool to help us, or maybe a number or something, to help us know how much this acid is dissociated. Because we see it's reversing. Can you think of any number or tool like that, Jace? You there, Jace? What do you think, Sarah? Any tool or number that might help us know how much this acid is dissociating? Um, I'm just guessing, but um, maybe when we find the K values, how it's the concentration of... That's right. That's okay. what that K value is for. That K value helps us know information about how much of this acid actually dissociates and how much is actually in the associated form. So, Brielle, when we see K equals 0 0.004, what does that tell us about how much this acid spends in the dissociated form and how much it spends in the associated form? What does it tell us, Brielle? Um, I I'm not sure because I know what K meaning like the equilibrium constant. That's right. Um, and if it's a small yeah. value like this, what does it mean in terms of product or reactants? Oh, so like the reactants would be more than the products would be. That's right. So it spends most of its time like that or the amount of material, most of it is going to be in this form, whereas a very small amount is going to be in the dissociated form, right? Because the K for this reaction equals the concentration of what, Jace? Are you there yet? Yeah, I'm back. Concentration of what? What is the K equal for this expression? A lot bigger than the product. Yeah, okay. Now, but I mean, in terms of the general equilibrium expression for oh, this reaction, what is K equal? It's going to be H times A. H plus times A minus over HA. Over HA. Very good. Now, that wasn't completely fair because I wasn't including the little aqueous symbols. All right. But if it's a weak acid and it's in water, it's going to be, it's going to be, um, if it's going to be dissociating, then it's going to be soluble in the water as well. All right, then. So, Sarah, here's another acid. Different acid. I'll call it HAX, just to kind of let you know that it's a different acid. It dissociates into H plus and this other, whoops, not, minus sign there. It has a K value of 0 0.0007. Okay. 
Which acid is stronger, HA or HAX? Sarah, what do you think? Strong acid means it completely dissociates, right? That's right. If it was a strong acid, it would completely dissociate. Both these have reverse arrows, so they're not strong acids. And now we're, we're all grown up, and we can say not just strong and weak, but how strong and how weak, right? Because, yes, if it was strong, that's it. That's all. They're all strong. But uh, weak acids, they can vary in their strength now. Can we tell by the K which one of these is a stronger acid? Make sure that looks like a capital K there. Um, I think it would be the first one. Be the stronger acid, right? That's right. Yeah. HA is stronger than the HAX down here. Right? This one's stronger than that one. And that's indicated to us by the fact that this value here is larger than that value, meaning at equilibrium, more of the dissociated material is available in this equilibrium than in that equilibrium. Okay, very good. Now, um, sometimes when we're talking about the K of an acid, we call it the Ka, the Ka. Okay, and we also introduced um, something called the Kb. The Kb for an acid is not really for an acid, but it's for the conjugate base of that acid. All right. So if I wanted to know the conjugate base of this acid, HAX, what do you think, Brielle? Do you know how to find the conjugate base if the chemical, if the acid is HAX? Do you know how to find the conjugate base for that? Well, that's K, uh, K A times K B to get um, the, I don't know what it's called, but K W? That's right, K W. Yeah. Very good. K A times K B gives us K W. And that was the next question I was going to ask. but. Back to this question to help other people review who might not remember this. If I have this acid, HAX, what is its what is the conjugate base of HAX, Brielle? Do you remember how to do that part? Um, it would be A B minus. That's right. Just the AX minus. So this is our acid here, and this is our conjugate base. Again, a little bit of review. So it's basically, the difference here is a proton, H plus ion. Very good. Now, we know the Ka here for this acid, and we know the conjugate base for this acid. It's Ax minus. And if Ax minus is going to behave like a base by pulling a proton off of water, the result will be if AX is going to be AX minus is going to behave like a conjugate base. The result is going to be the acid HAX, and we're going to have hydroxide ions left over once the proton is removed from the water. Okay, so this process we have the conjugate base of the acid behaving like a base with water, and like Brielle told us, there is this wonderful relationship between the Ka of an acid and the Kb of that acid's conjugate base. The Ka of the acid times the Kb of the conjugate base will equal Kw, where Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So if this here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 times 10 to the minus 4, we can solve for Kb simply by taking 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 7 times 10 to the minus 4, and that will give us our Kb. Okay, good set of reviewing there. A little bit more that we want to, to continue to review. Um, pH 
of a system, of any aqueous system, right, is what, Sarah? No, whose turn is it? Jace, Jace. Tell us, what is the pH equal, Jace, for any system? Okay, the pH equals, well, maybe we should start off with px, or pz, or py, right? Because it's not about what's here, it's the p function is always negative log of whatever it is you're talking about. Okay, so... pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion's molar, molar concentration. pH is the negative log of that hydrogen ion's molar concentration. So, if I say the hydrogen ion concentration for a solution is 0 0.001, that's the hydrogen ions concentration. What is the pH for this solution? How would we do that, Sarah? Or what, what's the answer, Sarah? So, the that would just be the negative log of 0 0.001, which is 3. Very good. So the pH will equal 3. Because to find the pH, if you know the hydrogen ion concentration, then you can just take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration and that will be the pH. Now, what if I have a different scenario here where I'm given the uh, pH, pH of this solution is 4.22, but I want to identify the hydrogen ion concentration. Remember this one, Brielle? How do we do this one? Of the pH, then that would be 4.22, and that will give you the concentration. Very good. So, 10 to the negative pH, and I can just do second log, and it'll give me 10 to the, sorry, it'll give me 10 to the, and then negative 4.22, and then that'll give me my concentration of hydrogen ions, 6 times 10 to the minus 5. That is my hydrogen ion concentration. Very good. So from the hydrogen ion concentration, we can get the pH. From the pH, we can get the hydrogen ion concentration. All right. Now, another problem. This is for you, Jace. Here's your problem. If the hydrogen ion concentration equals 3.3 uh, times 10 to the minus 6, what is the pOH? Okay, a little bit of thinking involved here. What do you think, Jace? How do we get there? How do we get to the pOH? Uh, so first of all, we're going to have to find the pH of so the negative log of 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6. And then we're going to do one or 14 minus that value. So 14 minus. All right, good. So 8.5 is our resulting, 8.52 about, is our resulting pOH. So what Jace did was he found the pH by taking the negative log of, of our value, negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration, right? And after he got that pH, which is 5.48, he knew that there is this relationship, pH plus pOH equals 14, which is, this one here, is pKW. So pH plus pOH equals pKW, or 14. Therefore, you can do 14 minus the 5.48 and get your 8.52, which is the pOH. All right. Great, a wonderful review of all of our different um, parameters that we 
uh, kind of need to be aware of moving forward. And it would allow us 